uh, welcome everybody and thank everybody for being here this afternoon. We are fortunate to have our junior board represented with Molly Rendell and uh, Courtney Phillips. And we are extremely excited to have Madison Chalk and Evan Bates with us today. So thank you for being here. And I will kind of let the girls take over and um, ask you guys some questions, see how you're doing and what you're doing. Awesome. All right. Okay, so how did you start skating? I was five when I started skating and I really got into it because my parents used to watch it on TV and it really was intriguing to me and I loved watching Michelle Kwan skate and I wanted to be just like her. And so I started skating and I fell in love with it. Maddie was probably pretty close to where you guys are in California, but I was across the country in Michigan and um, there are so many ice rinks in Michigan and skating has a rich history with Detroit Skating Club and I wasn't I was growing up not too far from there and my older sister was a figure skater my aunt was a figure skater and competed at adult nationals so it was just a matter of time before I was at the ice rink with my older sister my aunt my mom and they put me on the ice for group lessons for learn to skate and you loved it and I loved it <laughs> Did you skate with your sister, Evan? No, we never, um, we were never partners. She was four years older, so she was kind of taller Yeah. To me, to, for me to be her partner, but we each had our respective partners when we were like, I was nine, she was probably 13 years old. So we really started quite young with ice dance, which was fortunate for us. Good, all right. Um, who was your inspiration growing up? Mine was always Michelle Kwan um, from the very start. I just loved her. I love how she carries herself, her performance. She had she skated with so much passion and emotion, and she still does. You see her rollerblading videos and her skating videos. She's still full of passion when she performs, and so that really struck a chord with me, and I was happy to have someone so talented to look up to. And for me, I always... I've been asked this question quite a few times and I never really remembered um, until now. I realized that I was really into Kurt Browning as a boy. I remember being in third grade and I did a, a school project on Kurt Browning and um, somewhere my mom has a photo of me with like, you know, like the poster board that you make and then yeah. you print out pictures and you glue them on and you give a presentation as a third grader would do. So I did mine on Kurt Browning. So I, I must've been a big Kurt Browning fan. <laughs> One of those projects too. That's so funny. Well, that's good. So, so so far between you, you guys, and Caroline, Michelle Kwan is is two for two. She was <laughs> Caroline, right? How, being an Angelino, how could she not be right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then uh, we've got a new one with with Kurt. That's a good one, though, Evan. I think that's you know just the way he moved his feet and moved across the ice. I think it really translates to what you guys do as ice dancers too, his blade usage is so amazing. So it is amazing and he's still at it. I mean, he's still doing shows and posting videos and he's just such an entertainer. So I really yeah. enjoyed looking up to him. Good. All right, girls. When did you transition to ice dance and why? I was, 12 years old when I transitioned to ice dance. Um, it was in California and uh, my coach at the time, Darlene, recommended that I try ice dance because I was quite obsessed with footworks. I wanted, I was, I don't know, maybe intermediate and I wanted to put two footworks in my program and we were barely required to do one. <laughs> so she was like, hmm. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't like, want to oh. jump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just want to dance. <laughs> but yeah, um, so she um, turned me in the direction of ice dance and I, I really fell in love with it and it just took off from there and I moved to Michigan and started training there. And I was skating in Ann Arbor doing singles, doing learn to skate, and I was skating at the Ann Arbor Figure Skating Club, um, which is a club I still represent today. And um, some ice dance coaches moved there from Russia. Um, it was 1997. I was eight years old and um, they landed at my home rink and started looking for ice dance 
talent. And um, I was just in the right place at the right time and started taking lessons, I think around nine years old for ice dance. I just thought of something that's really cool, actually, and I think kind of rare. We both represented our home clubs, the same home clubs from the yeah. beginning of our skating careers till now. Right on. <laughs> Yay. Yay. So all year, all they, they, they both start with an A, so Ann Arbor and all year, you know, like, there you go. It's all good. Best, club. Best clubs, hand, hands down. Exactly. <laughs> and then, so, Evan, was that Yasa and Yuri that ended up in Ann Arbor? Right. Yes. Yeah. And then, Madison, who did you take from first? Who was your first dance coach? I took from Kelly Witt and oh, James. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was, I, cause, yeah, because here in California, it's certainly not a um, big, there's not a large coaching. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but I, I was for fortunate to have both of them as coaches because they were so fun and they made learning ice dance so, so much fun. And I think that's part of the reason I fell in love with it. Yeah, good, good. Um, how did you become partners? Ah, fun story. Well. <laughs> um, my previous partner, Greg Zerline, had decided to take a retirement from skating, and so I was looking for a partner. And at the time, Evan and I were both training at the same rink, and you were just coming back from a, a major injury. He had his, well, I'll let you tell it, because it's your story, so. Well, just, we found each other basically, you know, being at the same rink with the same coach at the same time, and I had been off the ice uh, recovering from an Achilles repair I had surgery there and like she said Greg retired and Maddie was left without a partner I was looking for a new partner we were already training and in the same rink living in the same area so it was kind of born from convenience but um, I think there was a little bit of destiny at, at play too because things just fell into place for us and I don't know if we would ever have ever sought each other out or found each other like without just being in each other's, you know, backyards, kind of. Yeah, we aren't your typical ice dance pair with our height difference and very different looks, but I think it worked out, worked out for the best. I think it's working out great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you guys have had, and you had such a fantastic season, too. I mean, definitely <laughs> things are improving every time I see you. Um, I think it is interesting, though, that you had that opportunity to, it was just kind of like being in the same place at the same time. When, and Evan, I had completely forgotten about your injury. Um, when, when, you got, when you were coming back, were you guys just kind of like skating around together for convenience? Or did you think, oh, let's kind of make this kind of a tryout period? Or was it really just kind of like messing around that kind of turned into like, hey, this kind of works? I think... Um... I was in the phase of kind of getting back on the ice and having just a ton of gratitude for the ability to skate again and having a fresh perspective. And so I knew I wanted to, to compete again. Yeah. And, um, you know, I was more so just in the kind of not recreational phase, but just the enjoyment place. Like I'd never felt so happy to wake up and go to the rink. And, um, I hadn't really had that perspective before. So it was a, it was a bit of, um, an eye opener, but also a blessing in disguise. If we're gonna just say every cliche we can think of, it's a <laughs> blessing in disguise. <laughs> um, I had a is, few other tryouts too, but Evan was my. Favorite. Yeah, Maddie. Maddie had a few tryouts, and I think, um, you know, she was only nineteen or so years old, twenty years old. So, um, you know, when well, a lot of the ice dance teams at the top level have been skating together for like decades. And so when we got together, I was 22 and Maddie was 19. Um, you know, we had a big height difference. We didn't like knock it out of the park right away, but we were just enjoying skating so much together. We had a blast together. We loved being in each other's company. And so that was, yeah, that's kind of how our whole relationship and partnership has started. And it's what it's based around is just having fun. And this is Henry. Hi, Henry. <laughs> We had, a we had a surprise uh, cameo appearance from Caroline's cat as well. So I think pets are also going to be part of this process. Bringing yes, in the pets. Yes, always welcome. Yes. <laughs> okay. What has been your favorite program to perform? 
I would say our snake dance from this past season. Um, it was really a fun one. I never got tired of it. And uh, still, like, it still makes me happy just to think about maybe performing it again. And it's just, yeah, I love the program, love the costumes. Same answer for me. Yeah, yeah. I love that program. So that's a, um, a program that you guys did this season. So if people wanted to go online and look at that, that would be from the 2019, 20 season, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And 2020 US Nationals too. Yeah. yeah. So 2020 US Nationals, that, that if they can get that on YouTube or what Grand Prix did you guys do this past year with that program? Uh, we did China and France. Okay. And the Grand Prix final. Then oh, and also. the final as well, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Good, okay. Yeah, I will say I love that program too, so yeah. definitely, okay. definitely a favorite. Um, what has been the hardest element to master? I would say the pattern dances, just because they're different every season, and um, they always bring challenge because of the, the rules and the key points. Um, so I would definitely say that because yeah, they're just always changing, but it's really fun. It's a fun challenge. Yeah, I think that's a great answer, the pattern dance. I would say also in ice dance, the footworks are so important. Mm -hmm. and there are so many points to be scored in the footworks, but also it's so tricky. It's so hard to have really clean turns and to have you know, a level four is called on all your footworks every time. I always feel like we're, and to still we're working. And dance. Yeah, I always yeah. feel like we're working on attaining a higher footwork level. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a. I think that's an interesting answer because I thought you guys would go in a different direction, honestly. Um, because those things that you mentioned are actually ice dance elements, right? So I thought maybe you would say the spins because spinning isn't a normal. I mean, it, it's become much more normal and a regular item for the ice dancers and the lifts. I mean, you guys do some like, and especially this season's program, Madison, I think the positions that you get into and Evan, the timing and everything that you guys have, like the lifting, I would think that I, I expect you to go kind of in that direction for the most difficult elements because they're not the normal ice dance element, right? But, yeah, that, that is interesting because I think um, you know, we don't practice. We, if you were to like look at how we spend our time training, I think we spend so much time doing the pattern dances and doing yeah. the work and, and so much less time doing spins and lifts. I mean, we do them every day and we do them as part of run throughs and things like that. But when we're getting really technical or when we're pulling out the iPad and we're looking at cleanliness of turns and things like that, that's really where we spend a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Interesting, great, okay, good. If you could pick the pattern for the 2022 Olympic Rhythm Dance, what would it be? That is a good question and one I do not have an answer to, um, mainly because I feel like we've done a lot of the dances already and I like being surprised at what they pick. It's, it's a fun challenge. I don't know which one I would pick though. I would love to do the golden walls, which I feel like is just like, it deserves to be skated in the Olympics. It's, it's called the golden walls, first of all. And it's, it's a really challenging dance. I know yeah. a lot of skaters <laughs> don't love it, but I feel like it just, it needs to be skated. Oh, I would it's, not say that at all. That's <laughs> not, not maybe my top 10. Just a part of it. Just so so a, Evan, not you're not saying it from, <laughs> Evan, you're <laughs> saying it from the perspective of, it's a dance that deserves its time in the spotlight, but is yeah, it really the dance that you love doing? Like, is it? Is, there, it's, no, it, it it's a, love, is waltzing your it's like a love hate. It's a love hate relationship. You know, when we did the the tango romantica mm -hmm. last year, it, it was such a challenging dance. This was the 2019 season. We felt like we were working hard to master it all season long, and at the end of the year, we still felt like we had room to grow, but it's one of those things yeah. where you're like, oh, I wish I had more time to work on it, but I kind of hate it, but I love it. Like, No, I totally get that. I think going back now, being more seasoned and being better skaters, the Golden Waltz would be yeah. easier. However, I mean, I had, you had to compete it too, back to back, right? Those two years, then when they just changed the rules, they did I it. I, I, don't, I think it 
I don't it was know. the compulsory think, dance one year, and then they made it into the pattern dance. I think it was her the next year. Ah, uh, okay. Well, so I had to compete it two years back to back, and that, mm. that was a very fun. Yeah, yeah, it kind of it <laughs> soured it. <laughs> well, I I think that you guys like I enjoy like the the way that you guys connect, and I think in the like as far as the rhythm goes, I think when you're picking like a latin rhythm whether it's like a cha-cha or a samba or something like that not necessarily that dance obviously because those you know silver samba is a lot i don't even think it's a very good dance but um <laughs> i think that that's a, a rhythm that i enjoy watching you guys do and then the like the quick step also i thought you guys showed so much joy um doing that fin step I like thank too. you yeah i did like that one i do have a, a list of favorites i mean yeah i love the oh, love the quick step the blues, the Yankee polka. So, yeah, there's a list. I guess I could pick. We do. We are like fans of pattern dances. We think, I mean, we both think they're super important for developing skating skills, and we enjoy working on them still. Mm. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, what is life like in Montreal? At the moment, um, pretty uneventful. Yeah. <laughs> <We're> well. <quarantined. laughs> um, but before. Uh, we quarantined. I mean, we love living in Montreal. Uh, there's so much to do and we have so many friends here that it's, that's just the main thing, like who you're surrounded by and um, obviously the restaurants are incredible. The city is so much fun. Yeah, I think I the diversity is so yeah. unique because you, a lot of the people who live here are French speaking or their first language is French. There's a lot of English spoken as well, but to live in a city in North America where you are hearing French every day being spoken on the streets, I think that's something that's so unique. There's no other city like it, really, mm -hmm. um, outside of Quebec. <laughs> it's like living in Europe without living in Europe. It's, but, it's yeah. a kind of the closest thing, I would say. But we like it very yeah, much. Yeah, you should, you should come visit. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I was supposed to be there. I was supposed to judge the ladies. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. I have to reschedule. Yeah. Yes, Hopefully. all of us have to reschedule our world's performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you had one piece of advice to offer a younger skater, what would it be? Mm. That's a good one. I would say, hmm, there's a lot of advice. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, you go okay. first. Um, so I would, I would give advice maybe more specifically to the male skaters, to the younger boys who are in skating. Um, and my advice would be that what makes you stand out, stick out, um, maybe feel different from the others when you're young is often a source of great um, discomfort, something that makes you feel self-conscious. But at some point in life, what makes you different and unique, it becomes cool. And it becomes interesting at a, at a certain point, everybody wants to be different and unique. So I experienced that a lot with skating when I was a young boy feeling self-conscious or around the rink, or around hockey players or, you know, being at school and, you know, kind of hiding the fact that I was a skater. But, you know, I would say to young people, don't hide it, be proud of it and, and understand that if it's a struggle right now, it's not going to be a struggle forever. But if you love it, you love it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I would say to surround yourself with with people you love and that make you feel good and and feel positive and encourage you and uh, that's really the most important thing. If you have that strong circle of people that you can lean on and rely on, it, it will take you a long ways because you don't get anywhere in this sport or in life for that matter um, by yourself. It, it takes a it takes a village and so just build up that circle and make sure it's strong and trust your people. Yeah, I think Madison, you've had, you really had a great um, opportunity. Well, it's not an opportunity, a great situation with your parents, you know, being so supportive of your, of your process and what you, you know, leaving California and moving to Michigan and that whole thing it does, it takes support and, and love. And I think that's a great piece of advice. So that's yeah, great. Absolutely. Very, very lucky, yeah. very grateful. 
Um, how are you keeping busy during the break? We have a lot of Zoom classes with our school, the Ice Dance Academy of Montreal. Um, they've been keeping us very busy and we're very, very grateful for that. Uh, we've been doing hip hop classes, ballet, Pilates, um, ballroom, yoga, I mean, you name it, we're doing it. <laughs> it's been, it's been really fun. And we also spend a lot of quality time with our, with our two dogs. Um, we've been going through a good catalog of Netflix. Um, yeah. And just, Evan plays guitar and I practice artwork and day goes by quickly. That's great. That's good. So is that your artwork behind you, Evan? No, no, I actually bought this piece. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even know you played guitar. You've never played for me. You know what? <laughs> I've never had a guitar handy when we've been hanging out. <laughs> it sounds like you guys are really busy with the, uh, with those classes. I mean, it, like all the structure and, um, taking time each day to make sure you're doing certain things that's sounds like it's keeping you nice and busy and not allowing you to get too stir crazy yeah we've been staying really busy and by the time friday rolls around we're like stoked it's the weekend <laughs> and, you know like and yeah. i think the first the first couple of weeks it was really there was a lot of like shock and it took some time for things to settle and for the new routine to kick in and then at a certain point, it felt like the days and the weeks started flying by. Yeah. And now we're almost two months into quarantine. And I can't believe that it's been that long. But yeah. at the same time, we're really, we're really looking forward to getting back on the ice, looking forward to, yeah, getting back to doing what we love. Excellent. All right. Well, we really want to thank you guys for making time to be here. And I think that Evan, like you just said, everybody's itching to get back on the ice. I mean, I know I, as an official, am, am looking forward to getting back in the rink and seeing skating. And I know the girls here are anxious to get back on the ice as well also. And hopefully as things start to have some restart of uh, normal, we'll see where that goes and how we all get there. But we definitely look forward to seeing you in the rink and on the ice again. We, we love watching the two of you. And Congratulations again on your championship this year. It was really exciting to, to watch and to be there. And, um, you know, I, I, along with you, am sorry that we didn't get to get to Montreal for Worlds and finish up the season that way. But um, we wish you the very best of luck in the, in the season coming up. And if there's anything uh, we can do for you, you know, let us know. And we are really thankful that you guys took time to be with us today and, and share your experience with our, with our club and with all our members. Of course. Thank you so much, Doug. Thank all you right. For having, thank you for your great questions, Courtney and Molly. We really had a great time. And thank you to all your figure skating club, everybody there who supported us through our entire partnership and uh, looking forward to catching up with you guys when all of this subsides and we're all skating again and enjoying what we love to do.